So, hello, my name is Jessica West, and I researched the Nuchalna healing and medicine practices. So, how I started my research was I made a list of questions that I wanted to answer. And my first question was I wanted to know what they thought made them sick. I wanted to know also how they dealt with sickness when it arose. I wanted to know if there was any modern research that was done on their medicine to show that it's been considered to be effective. I wanted to know if they had doctor figures in their culture, and I also wanted to know how they gained the knowledge that they had and also how they stored that knowledge. So my first question was, what did they think made them sick? And I wanted to know this because they didn't have science and labs to tell them about viruses and bacteria, so they had to think something. So what I found was that it was really based on their core belief that the spiritual and the physical realm are deeply connected and that their well-being rested on, these, on a really delicate balance between the two. And so the harmony between those was very important for them. And any time that harmony was broken or disrupted, you would have resulting illness or other bad things would happen. So I found this article. Um, it was an Arnold and Bruce in 2005, and they used the philosophical framework outlined in the Sawak book to come up with four causes of illness in the Nuchalna's culture. They used the stories in the book to explain their reasoning, and it was neat to see the same stories applied in a different way, and they were, those stories seem so simple on the outside, but they really pull a lot out of them, and it's that whole idea of there being like a lot of implicit knowledge in their culture. So the four causes are these, and the first one is immediate, and that is the simple causes, like you fall off the cliff and you break your leg. The second cause is non-supernatural, and this is observable cause and effect relationships, like if you rub the poison oak tree, you get a rash later. The ultimate causes are non-observable cause and effect relationships, and this, these are like imbalances in family and community, and it's the whole idea of harmony being really important. The fourth cause is supernatural causes, and these are like the spirit and demon realms, and it's that core belief of the spiritual and the physical being always in harmony. So this is, um, like an example here would be like, you pissed off the spirits, you did something they didn't like, and so now you're sick. So I wanted to know how they dealt with sickness when it happened. And so part of their culture was really strict ceremonies and rituals, and one of the example stories is of a whale hunter who practiced for many months. He did all these ceremonies and rituals to get ready for the hunt. And then on the day of the hunt, his wife was supposed to be um, partaking in these rituals while he was hunting. And she stopped. She got too excited and like ran towards the beach. And the whale turned away from the hunter and started swimming the other way. And so this is the whole idea of they, it's very important that they stick to these rituals. And the same concept applied to them when they were sick. They had really particular activities and foods that they weren't supposed to eat when they were sick and they had really specific medicines that they were given. So I wanted to know what they used for medicine and not surprisingly they used plants. Um, they had a really big diversity of plants in their habitat as we all know and they used them for tools, canoes, homes, everything. So I found this Turner and Coxedge article in 2001 that listed, they compiled all of the knowledge they had on the Nuchalna's medicinal um, plants and they had them in a big list and they categorized them in these following categories. General tonics, purgatives, laxatives, emetics, salves, pulstices, skin ailments, colds, respiratory, gynecological problems. So they had a very extensive knowledge of the local fauna, or floral, sorry. <laughs> I found um, another Turner article that talked about how the seaweed in the area was used as a medicine for indigestion, heartburn, and antiseptic. And what I thought was interesting here was that the plants were like multi-purpose. They weren't only used for medicine, they were used for medicine and food and all of the things. And many of the plants, including this particular seaweed, are still harvested today by tribal members. So the article that made the list of all the medicinal plants was very long. So I made a shortened list um, of plants that are probably common to most of the people who live in this area. And you can see that they had like a particular part of the plant and that it treated a particular illness. So this is like a little window into their medicine cabinet. So I started researching some of their medicine to see if um, 
modern research has shown anything to be effective. And one of the cool things I found was stinging nettle. They used it to treat arthritis, and I found a 2013 article that also found it to be anti-inflammatory and anti-arthritic. So I thought that was pretty interesting that they had that knowledge. Um, so you're probably all pretty familiar with stinging nettle, and it's, I thought that was really ironic because that's like the plant that you stay away from around here because it has the little hairs on it that are like hypodermic needles and they inject histamines and other chemicals into you when you touch them. And I wanted to know if any of you guys ate nettle because I've heard of people eating it like fresh. There's a special way you can like flip up the leaves and eat it and you can make green smoothies with it and other stuff which is pretty neat. Um, so another herb I looked at was red elderberry which is um, a deciduous shrub. It grows about 10 to 20 feet tall and it's got these characteristic red berries. The more common one that people are familiar with is the, I think it's black or blue elderberry, and you can drink those as a tea. But the root of this plant um, was used for gynecological problems by the new Chalmers, and nowadays you can get it in the health food store as a throat spray and as a general health booster, and it's been used historically for a long time around the world as a medicine. But the berries on this are toxic. They, they cause something in digestion to turn to cyanide, so you can hurt yourself if you eat the berries, so don't ever eat the berries, it's the roots. The next plant that I researched was Devil's Club. This is a three to four foot tall shrub. It can get up to 16 feet tall in ideal environments. And you guys may have run into this hiking out here. It kind of tends to like form these really like dense forests and it, they, the leaves are so broad that it makes like a whole layer of understory and nothing grows beneath it because they totally block out the sun below uh, beneath them and they have these spines all up and down them. And we have one of the densest populations of this plant and they, the natives used it for rheumatism and arthritis. And I found a current study that found it to have anti-cancer properties, which that's not arthritis, but I thought that was still pretty interesting that um, they were able to find that and the study actually isolated which particular chemicals in the plant had the anti-cancer properties. So my next question was, I wanted to know if they had doctor figures in their culture. And it turns out that most of the medicinal plant knowledge was common knowledge to everyone in the culture. So their need for doctors was much lower than ours. And I did actually find a reference in the Sawak book on page 94 of an Ush Doxi, which is a new Chalnath doctor. And these doctors treated problems that were beyond home treatment, special cases. I'm guessing that they were probably that fourth cause of the ultimate causes when you've like pissed off the spirit world, that those are the ones that they treated. And they were very well respected in the culture because they had this really elaborate spiritual method that they used to gain knowledge. So one of my last questions was I wanted to know how they acquired the knowledge that they had. And my guess was that it was trial and error. You get sick and you go out and eat a plant and see if it makes you better and try to remember for next time. But um, the natives tell a much different story. So they, in the Atlio book, he talks about the, the doctor that I had just referred to out of the Atlio book used what was called the Sumich method, which is a process of like really strict rituals and spiritual practices that the doctors or anyone can use to get really close with the spiritual realm and in doing so it opens up a whole world of knowledge to them. I also found another similar reference in the Turner 2003 article where it talked about seaweed being used as a medicine and they talked about the way that the natives supposedly had got this knowledge was a story that had been passed down through the lineages of a man whose wife got really sick and he went and tried to find medicine for her and couldn't find any for days and days and so he went on a really long canoe trip and when he was out paddling he saw a man on a rock in the middle of the ocean and the man said hey come over here and the man told him to pick this seaweed dry it chop it mix it with hot water and grease and feed it to his wife and he did and she was very soon cured so the tribe had a huge celebration and they went and harvested a bunch of the seaweed and then they continued telling this story on down the generations and that's how they got this knowledge. So um, ultimately their knowledge was acquired through the spiritual realm and not trial and error. So then my next question was how do they store this knowledge? Because the list in that article was so long and for that to be common knowledge that that's so much like even for one of us to remember. And it was really based, the answer was really based on them being in 
oral culture. They used those stories, like the seaweed story, and they would use social gatherings where they would get together and they would share new information. And I know we were talking about in class with the potlatch, one of the purposes was to bring in people and give them gifts in order for them to be witnesses to store some new information. So they used memory instead of paper and, and language to store knowledge. So just to conclude what I've just said, um, they're, they believe that they got sick because of imbalances between the spiritual and the physical realm. They had specific plants that were used as medicine. Many of these plants are still used today medicinally. They did have doctors for special cases, but most of the medical knowledge was common to them. And they achieve, or they got this knowledge by connecting with the spiritual realm, and they stored their knowledge in stories and social gatherings. And my references, and any questions?